Hi. How's everybody doing today? A very, very brief uh, introduction to one of uh, Hitler's so-called terror weapons. And this short presentation will introduce uh, the audience to the German small-scale atom bomb. The bomb design was similar to Professor Werner Heisenberg's uh, B3 experiment at Berlin Dahlem in early 1942, which involved alternating layers of uranium powder and paraffin inside an aluminum sphere. The neutron source was a radium beryllium preparation dropped into the apparatus center by way of a chimney. The laboratory built prototype would have given a low-yield atomic explosion when compressed uniformly at Mach 3.5 if the uranium powder with plutonium, by leaving it to breed in a subreactor for months, was available. That seems to have been the purpose of Heisenberg's experiments at uh, Leipzig, commencing June 2, 1942. The bomb would have been about two feet in diameter. The paraffin prevented the premature fission of the material, fission of the material caused by the energetic, of course, plutonium-240 isotope. Tests to prove the lead-jacketed bomb were almost certainly carried out in the Baltic region and near Norway during late 1944. There would have been negligible fallout, and of course, uh, after the war, years after that, a search of the grounds for elevated uh, radioactivity uh, proved uh, groundless, no pun intended. And there also would have been no significant blast with the Heisenberg device. Hitler was against using the bomb operationally on doctrine grounds. The Leipzig experiment started on June 2, 1944, and had an outer aluminum sphere 740 millimeter in diameter, and it was filled with 750 kilograms of uranium metal powder. Now, a concentric inner sphere containing 220 liters of heavy water was contained internally in the device. A radium beryllium neutron source was introduced through the chimney to begin the reaction. The neutrons from the center were slowly on passing through the heavy water before radiating into the uranium powder where they fissioned U-235 isotopes to increase more neutrons or combined with the U-238 resonances to form plutonium. Left to work for several months, this is a subtle means of uranium enrichment and plutonium production. The irradiating power, assembled in alternating layers with the paraffin in a spherical casing, would then serve as a low-yield atomic bomb if detonated with an effective implosion fuse. Now, before uh, we go on to the next uh, installment here, uh, a Professor Goldschmidt's version of the Heisenberg's bomb appeared in this man's book, Alsos, The Future in German Science, which was published in 1947. And here, Professor Goldschmidt had a sketch in the book of what he thought the bomb looked like. You may want to refer to this book to learn more about the uh, Heisenberg prototype bomb. Now, moving along, the German flying saucer. During the spate of flying saucer sightings during the midsummer of 1947, a type that looked like a flying crescent was frequently seen and reported. It was suspected by the United States Air Force intelligence that the craft was man-made and of German origin. Who was piloting it, where it was coming from, no one knows. At least, it's not been declassified. A, a declassified paper reported it as a 1942 design assigned to the HO6 parabola. And of course, Reimer, Reimer Horton, uh, one of the three Horton brothers that were designing gliders and parabolas, well, he disappeared at the end of World War II. This is uh, Kenneth Arnold, who actually... Uh, in 1947 reported that it looked like these crescent or saucers skipping over water. It was the beginning of the UFO era. Here's an artist's depiction of such a flying crescent and another depiction. Where did it come from? Who had manufactured it? 
and what technology they possess in the year 2012. Hey, thank you for listening. Bye for now.